I'm Mike Weatherford. And I'm Billy Busey. Welcome to the Mike Weatherford Show. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. We've got a good show, Billy. we got one tonight that I'm excited oh, about. Oh, I am too. Man, I want to thank all my listeners out there, and I want to invite everybody to uh, go to Facebook, like us, and follow us, and for right now, go to YouTube and subscribe to us, because we need all the all the subscriptions and likes and following we can get. Uh, so we can keep this thing going. So we can keep it going. We are a month old, and we are moving along, man. We're bringing in some good guests that I think a lot of people, right now the topics, Billy, is pretty hot oh, about yeah. what we're talking about tonight. We're going to be talking about human trafficking. We're going to talk about the uh, the mess, as that's the proper word to use, Billy, that we've got in Afghanistan. And uh, we've got a gentleman on here tonight that uh, – I'm going to be reading, I'm going to read this man's bio. His name is Dr. Richard Showborough. He has over 25 years law enforcement experience, including the Federal Bureau of Investigation, we call it the FBI, and National Counterterrorist Center. He has served in a variety of positions throughout his career, ranging from supervisory special agent at the FBI headquarters in Washington, D.C., to unit chief of international terrorism operations section at the headquarters in Langley, Virginia. And he has also um, worked as a special agent investigating violent crime, human trafficking, international terrorism, and organized crime. He has also assigned numerous collateral duties during his FBI tour, including a certified instructor and member of the agency SWAT programs. In addition, he has authored several books, and he's been a contributor for Fox News, CNN, PBS, NPR, Al Jazeera, Sky News in Europe, and some names I can't even say, Billy. Oh, don't ask me to say them. The world, man, this dude has. And uh, he has also works for Hope for Justice, a global nonprofit combating human trafficking. I want to welcome Dr. Richard Showbrill to the show. Welcome, Richard. Yes, thank, thank you, thank you. Thank you. you. Yep, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Man, I am I am jumping right on the wagon tonight, man, to have somebody of your caliber to come visit us here in Paris, man. I mean, it, I'm proud to have you, man. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here in order to uh, – enlighten people and spread some awareness as mm-hmm. to some of the issues that are going on man we got a lot to talk about tonight <clears throat> yeah. i mean uh i don't know if we need to start on human trafficking or afghanistan let's do- that's gonna have me a two-part series it may have to be uh i'm gonna start a little bit here on a little bit different than what i thought i would but hope for justice what what, what is that you're, you're a part of um hope for justice is an international nonprofit uh headquartered in the united kingdom uh we're on five continents uh over 40 plus offices um the u.s headquarters is in nashville tennessee what hope for justice does is they try to uh prevention rescue restore and reform so prevention through education raising people's awareness in regards to uh, the problem surrounding human trafficking, and then also to um, rescuing victims. Hope for Justice em- employs people who are retired law enforcement who go out and actually uh, work in- to rescue victims. They work alongside law enforcement, also work separately uh, to investigate these type of crimes, and then restoring victims' lives, because rescuing a victim is-, is just an event. There's a process uh, when you think about the trauma that these victims have went through um, throughout their lives of being trafficked, whether through labor or sex, but then also reforming society and, and changing the laws to better combat uh, what's happening. Okay. Uh, can I ask you, what exactly is human trafficking? Can you... Yeah, a lot of people uh, confuse human trafficking uh, with with smuggling, and they're, and they're not the same thing, right? Because smuggling is, is voluntary, and no one's ever raised their hand and say, will you, will you please traffic me? So when we talk about the, the pure definition of human trafficking, it's compelling somebody to engage in, in sex acts or labor acts through force, fraud, or coercion. And a lot of times when we look at force, fraud, or coercion, you know, that can be an individual who might be addicted to drugs. That can be an individual who's threatened or, or forced into providing these type of, of acts. And in order to prove sex trafficking or labor trafficking, you don't need to have forced fraud and coercion. You just need to have one of the three. Okay. Uh, how, how prevalent is it a major issue 
in, in, in the United States of America, human trafficking? It absolutely is uh, an issue. You know, a lot of times, you know, as society, we've put our heads in the sand. Yeah. You know, we don't like to talk about, you know, sex crimes or, or, you know, people who are vulnerable. But when you look at the funnel that feeds human trafficking, we're talking about uh, kids who are runaways. You know, uh, you know, they're forced, uh, basically, survival sex. You know, they have no food, no money, no clothing, uh, and, and, and they get uh, taken advantage of and forced into prostitution. That's one aspect that feeds the funnel. Uh, foster kids bouncing around from ho- from home to home. And then, you, you know, you've got individuals who are addicted to, to narcotics and that become dependent, chemically dependent upon that narcotic. But then you have your trafficker who exploits them uh, through the use of force or also they're dependent upon that trafficker now, not just for shelter, not just for food, but also that chemical dependency f- for that drug. So there's many forms of, of this. And, and one of the biggest concerns, you know, that I that I'm seeing is is, you know, this this lack of of regulation or competency we've had with the illegal immigration coming through the southwest border. Whether you agree with, you know, immigration or not immigration, that's not the debate. The 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 issue is we've got these individuals coming in that are basically ghosts. We don't know they exist, right? And <clears throat> because we don't know that they exist, they're easily exploitable by traffickers. We know the cartel is charging anywhere between five and ten thousand dollars to smuggle someone into the United States. And then once they get in here, then they're exploited because they have that debt bondage. They owe that money back to the trafficker or back to the cartel. And then they have to work that off. And it's, you know, and we know statistically that about 67 percent of labor trafficking victims are Hispanic. So when you just look at it from a numbers game, there's there's no way around the fact that that the numbers are going to escalate just with the number of people coming into the country. And they're saying right now that by the end of this year, we'll have roughly 300,000 unaccompanied minors. That's unaccompanied minors in, in the U.S. Come across the border. <clears throat> That's what we know about. What, what yeah. don't we know about? Exactly. Right? You know, when you see the, the images of these of these kids being dropped over the border wall, right. you know, one, two, and three years of age, those are the ones that we actually captured on camera and saw. What about the ones when the camera wasn't there and we didn't see? You think it's in the millions? <clears throat> Oh, yeah, it, it, it's uh, I would guesstimate that. Well, I mean, it's hard to know how many people it is because we just don't know, Mike. Mm-hmm. You know, when when you look at it and, and you know, the border control um, is is there's not enough people. Uh, people are just coming across. I mean, there's two thousand. What miles. happened to our border? I hate to <clears throat> buddy, excuse me. Yeah. But uh, we had a, a border up until here recently. I'm not trying to get political, but hell, I'm going to get political. We had a border that yep. was sealed. <clears throat> Pretty well. Mm-hmm. Well, they was working on it. Not totally. No, but it was better. Oh, know? Biden, when he come in, he shut down that. That's right. Now, you're, you're right. And then all of a sudden, it, they're just flooding, flooding. The gates are open. They're allowing them in. And you being an, an FBI guy, was that part of your job? When you was in this counterterrorism and organized crime, did you have to deal with the, the the mess that was going on at the border? Is that part of your job? Well, obviously, it's a concern for for when you work counterterrorism and, and you and you think about how porous the border is, yeah. and and the people coming across come anywhere, it, the people that come across it that you know about, it's the ones that you don't know about. We know that terrorists from overseas have used the southwest border yeah. to access the United States because of the ease of the availability of them to do that, right. and so certainly it's a, it's it's a concern. That that, you know, we have to monitor. And, and basically, it's just like we've opened the door and the floodgates. And it's like Billy said, you know, we were trying to yeah. establish some sort of uniformity to to prevent illegal immigration, particularly under the previous administration. But this administration just basically has said, well, come on over here, you know, without a plan in place. Right. Yeah, they're but, unregistered voters. Right. So uh, <clears throat> with the border being easier access, that's actually helping out with human trafficking. It, yeah, absolutely, it is because when when we're talking about the number of people that are coming across and their their level of vulnerability and the risk factors of them being trafficked is is at a, a, an all time high, and you you try to tell people that you know as Americans we, we want to be humanitarians, right? And, right? and 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 think about what is pushing them out of this country, yeah. out, of, out of their country, cartels, drugs, violence, poverty, and what's pulling them here is is opportunity, right? So how do you blame somebody for wanting to leave that behind in order to get here but doing it undocumented and without a process uh, puts them here and makes them more vulnerable because that now they're they're easily exploitable uh when they get here because we don't even know they're here yeah how many of them got covid so we're uh they're super spreaders down there on that border 
Well, particularly when you put a lot of people in that in a confined space like that, yeah, yeah I mean, ab- absolutely. What are the different types of human smuggling? I, is is it they smuggle them for labor? You said, and they smuggle them for sex. I mean, well, I, I thought when I heard the word human smuggling, I thought they meant they were just getting them across the border, turn them loose, and they was illegal immigrants in well, our smuggling country. Smuggling's different than trafficking. Yeah, mm-hmm. but what 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 is a different type of what what, what is a different what are they doing with these? Yeah, what what we typically you understand my question? Yes, absolutely. I do and what what we see or what we're seeing here is the the top two people being exploited for for right. sex um, or labor but also too you have to look at domestic servitude you know people who are domestic slaves and you know people that are brought here to the country under the pretext of come be a nanny or come here and work for me at my house and then them them, them not getting paid right and basically they're so clandestine what are you gonna do go knock on everybody's house well, and say excuse me oh, so was, but if, if a person gets one to come to their house and do house cleaning, they're paying the cartel. They pay who are they paying to get that service? They may not realize they're paying the cartel, but that ultimately that's who's got running. you. They think they're paying that person, but they're really paying back that debt. Right. So they they're just they don't know that. That's right, just, right. Just, yeah. So so really, slavery has not stopped in this country more people are enslaved now across the globe than ever before okay yeah you know we think we eradicated slavery yeah. 150 years ago but we didn't there's still people that are um what we would call modern day slavery uh today and that's what human trafficking is it's modern day slavery in, in your line exactly. of, in your line of work did you uh uh, that was a big part of your job was to keep up and, and, and check on and investigate human trafficking. Have you got some stories how bad it can get? I mean, what they put these people through? Children on up to older people or anything you can share? Yeah, I mean, you know, one story still still resonates with me, and, and this happened a couple of years ago. Um, and this is why it's so important to educate people on what to look for and how to spot the signs of human trafficking because, you know, particularly in the industries that industry that intersect with trafficking victims. So roughly 88% of trafficking victims have been to a healthcare facility and gone unrecognized as a trafficking victim. So we know it's important to train clinicians, hospital settings, and, and individuals like that so that they recognize the signs, they know what questions to ask, they know what screening tools to use. And about two years ago, there was a, a lady who we rescued um, who came here from the Philippines 37 years ago uh, to be a nanny. And um, she slept on the floor. She only got to eat what food was left over um, after dinner. And I don't mean the food that was left over. I mean the scraps that were left on people's plates. Wow. And <clears throat> she had gone to the hospital. And one of the reasons why she was still, uh, you know, enslaved was because there was a language barrier. She didn't speak English. So fortunate for her, when she went to the doctor's office, um, there was a clinician there that was actually from the Philippines and spoke her, her language. And she had also been trained on what to look for. And she recognized recognized that she was a victim of human trafficking, contacted us. We worked this investigation uh, alongside law enforcement, but she was 78 years old and she'd been a domestic slave for 37 years. How do you give somebody 37 years of their life back? You know, and the what, what, what haunts me today to this date is she couldn't understand why she wasn't going to go back to that family uh, because that's the only life she knew. She didn't even know how old she was. She'd been enslaved for so long. That's all she knew. And did they get the people that done this to her. Yeah, absolutely, they did. They, what, what did, they, they, did they slap them on the wrist and turn them away, or they put them in? The no, pen? it went to it went to federal court, and you know, I mean, you know, when you take these these crimes federally, uh, the prosecution is pretty pretty swift, and the penalties are, are pretty high. When we, when we look at that, this isn't a, an issue that you can arrest our way out of either. When we look at all these human trafficking stings, you know, it kind of reduce that. The problem, excuse me, the problem I'm seeing is you could be. Uh, participated in human trafficking and not even know it. Is that is that basically a true statement? Yeah, she didn't even know that she was being. No, I'm talking uh, about as an employer. I might have hired oh. someone and and wasn't even aware that I was yep. like hiring somebody to mow your yard, or somebody to clean your house, or maybe even babysit or be a nanny, and you're well, not even being asked about a green card. Yeah, are not even aware that that's yeah. going on. Is that is that happening? Yeah, that's happening, and it's it still and it's is still that is common. That, and the key is is that yeah, it's common because we haven't taken the level of awareness and educated enough people as to what to look for, what signs. 
to, 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 to train people on. And that's why you have to break it down by sector. So if you go out and you train law enforcement, it's not the same type of training as you would clinicians. And it's not the same type of training as it would be for teachers. So you've got to not have a cookie cutter curriculum when you talk about training aspect and, and design it specifically for that specific industry that the trafficking victims intersect with. Mm. Why, why are we so uh, the United States or why people just kind of ignore this? I mean, I I knew that this was an issue, but it started coming to light. But then, like, when I was trying to bring it up, it, a lot of people around here didn't really believe in it. Why is it so? Yeah, how has it stayed hidden? Well, people, yeah, well, trafficking victims don't walk around with a shirt on that says I'm being trafficked. It's such a clandestine crime. And people aren't educated enough on what signs to look for. And everybody thinks, there. you know, a lot of communities are naive to the fact that it's not happening here. But last year, there was a human trafficking case in every county in the state of Tennessee. Tell us some of the signs. So when you're looking if, at if, 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 if the audience out there listening, it's, you know, when they knew you was coming on, uh, they said, um, ask them if it's happening around here and tell us what to look for. Can you briefly give us what we need to? Yeah. I'm, you know, your and it's different for, for sex and for and for labor. Right. And, you know, a lot of times people think that these these kids can't be trafficked by family members, but often that often they are trafficked by family members. And you want to look for for kids, particularly that's why it's important to train at the uh, in the educational institutions, because we know that sexual exploitation for, starts at about 12 uh, in, in young girls. So that's why it's important to train educators, because these 12 year olds are going to be in school. Right. Then they're going to have family members that are going to recognize this. You know, your person at Walmart and just walking by somebody is not going to pay attention and look and, and, and recognize somebody and pick them out as, as a trafficking victim. So, you know, I'm not saying that it's just girls and boys don't get trafficked, too. But obviously, the majority of trafficking victims are young females. Uh, and so that's why is it's it mostly sex. <clears throat> Mostly sex for young females, yeah. but we also have a labor trafficking issue here because you know when you see when you go into these restaurants or you go into you know agriculture or migrant work right um, or even massage parlors you know the illicit massage parlor business across the United States um, is is really um, out of control when when you look at the number of these parlors where they're bringing in women from overseas and they're rotating them around from massage parlor to massage parlor so law enforcement can't get an eye on who these individuals are. Mm. Do we have it here in Henry County? Um, I would be uh, misleading if I said no, that you didn't have it here. I heard it had some on Kentucky Lake. Did you hear that rumor? I don't know. Well, what yeah, there's uh, – Maybe that's another story. Yeah, there, yeah, there's something going on. Well, you know, one of the things we're starting to see now is traffickers actually renting Airbnbs. So they'll have pop-up brothels, and they'll rent these Airbnbs, bring these girls in, yeah. prostitute them out for the night, and then the next day they're gone. I, I heard about them using RVs and stuff like that and transporting them and, and you know, yeah. doing it right there. Well, how do they advertise it? I mean, I'm Onla done. Online. When you go online, there's there's so many different websites out yeah, that's there. That's what I, I was going to ask. I, I, can't even, I can't even tell you, but, you know, how many how many they're out there. But, you know, we, the government, shut down uh, Backpage. You heard of Backpage? Okay. Yep. <clears throat> so because human trafficking is a $150 billion a year business, right, um, the fact is is that it, it, it's a business. So when they shut down Backpage, they just created what they call eBackpage.com. So now you can just go on there and you can order whatever you want and answer all these ads and one of the victims that we rescued had told told us about uh, some of the sites that they were using and how you can tell if it's uh, a trafficker who is uh, advertising this for a girl that he's going to prostitute out because of the fact that the the vulgarity of what they talk about on there she goes no woman would would say that about herself so obviously you know it, it, it that person is a victim because the trafficker himself is making would, her say that would yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, so sex with minor or younger girls is basically the, uh, the most common form of human trafficking. Yeah, and a lot of these, you know, kids that, that feed into this funnel. So let's just take, for example, uh, runaways. So last year, um, we, uh, we look for runaways because we know that the number is, is high uh, within there because the longer they're away from home, the more chances they have. How to do they had to be exploited. So uh, Billy probably knows these answers, and and and, and gee, I don't. Thanks, Mike. Huh? I said, "Gee, thanks, Mike." Well, I mean, <laughs> you, you, how? 
a, a, a child runs away from home. Mm-hmm. They got problems at home. So they more than likely don't have a stable life at home most people, of the time. People run away for different reasons, right? right? But, you know, yeah. you're, you're not going to stay at a house, obviously, that you feel loved and, and you know, at. Yeah. So, you know, uh, so when these kids do run away, right. you often worry what they're running away from. Right. And is are you returning them to a place that was much worse than where, where they went? Exactly. And, and when they get out there and, and, and these people are nice to them probably at first, probably feed them, take them in, give them some clothes. And the next thing you know, they're prostituting them. Yeah. I, it's just that's, I just can't I, don't, I didn't even realize that was a big they're deal they're exploiting their vulnerabilities and when you think about you know how vulnerable a kid is already at that age yeah. right yeah, and they then, run away from home yeah. Yeah. and they run away from home and then they re- resort to the survival sex mode because they've got no food no clothing no money no shelter mm-hmm. and then now they become uh, you know controlled by that that trafficker mm-hmm. Uh, is the internet a big, big part of human trafficking? Yeah, said that. it cer- certainly is, and and we started to see that rise during the you know COVID pandemic. Right. You know, as if kids could be more online than they already are. Right. Yeah. We're, we were starting to see more and more children online, and for a trafficker, uh, you know, you think about it, you know, they they're it's like shooting fish in a barrel uh, for them because they get online, they create this dialogue, um, and, and then they cut and paste that dialogue with a hundred different people in a chat room you know one of those or two of those or three of those kids are going to bite on that dialogue they're going to start grooming them online and then they're going to exploit them one of the biggest concerns now is you don't even physically have to possess a kid now to traffic them what they're doing is they'll they'll sextort them online they will uh, convince them to send them a picture, a nude picture, for example, right? And, you know, and kids, have, it's also become almost, you know, commonplace for these kids to send, you know, a topless picture of them uh, to somebody or whatever. And then that's, that's part of dating now. Right, right, <laughs> right, right. And then so then that trafficker will extort them and say, hey, I'm going to show this to uh, your parents or I'm going to send this to your school or I'm going to do this unless you send me more. And there have been cases where these traffickers will have their victims live stream sex acts and then they'll sell seats uh to that live performance to people all around the world so not only do you have to be worried about the the guy that lives in your hometown you got to be worried about the the guy that lives uh you know uh, half a world away from us exploiting these kids and that's why i always tell parents it's so important to not be naive and assume your kids aren't talking to somebody online that they shouldn't be talking to when i was growing up my parents would always say if a stranger pulls up don't go uh talk to them if they roll their window down or or whatever yeah. right so <clears throat> you know what's the difference in that window that's called the internet now now kids are even more exposed to vulnerabilities and in heinous let's just face it they're heinous people out they're there. sick people yeah. out there yep <clears throat> out there, i mean it, it, it's it, it's it's just it's unreal billy well you got good and evil heard i mean yeah, it's been it's around sad. but i mean to take these people and, and make slaves out of them that we had a a, a civil war Settled that issue 150 years ago, no, and it's still going on. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. still going on today. And we got people like you that's been involved in that for years and years and years, trying to get a handle on it. And it seems like you just can't stomp it out, can you? No, I mean, and and that's the, that's the the difficulty of this is because it's such a profitable business for these for these traffickers. Um, you know, you can only sell a drug once, but you can resell that girl over and over and over again. What's some of the signs that a parent needs to look for? <clears throat> if you, know. I, you know, obviously if your kid's withdrawn, um, if, if, if they're hiding their correspondence on, on their phone, they get nervous or spending more time online than they typically did before. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, we know statistically that 40% of these don't even get reported to law enforcement because the parents are embarrassed it happened to their kid or the kid's too embarrassed to tell their their folks and you know so they're continually exploited only because of the the embarrassment of of all of it and i urge people that if you haven't you know received you know human trafficking training or your business that hasn't received human trafficking training you should get it it's it's one hour because i always tell people that you know uh, i'd rather you say something and be wrong than not have said something and had been right so what would be the like uh say the top five people that that are groups that traffic like you know uh, the cartel or uh you know is is there a list in in you know believe it or not more people um are trafficked by individuals than they are groups 
okay, from a from a broad sense. You know, you're talking about a, a pimp in downtown Nashville that has three or four girls that he's exploiting. Okay, that's the norm that we see from an organizational standpoint. Yes, there are several groups uh, out of you know uh, Mexico. All you know, all of the cartels. I mean, every one of them. Uh, it's just business. It, it's just business to them, right? And you know, it's like it, it's diversification in your business when you look at it. They're not putting their eggs in one basket because they do know that the drugs are limited to being sold once. Hmm. What is most dangerous myth? about human trafficking that, that it never happened to me or what, what do you always that, that really that's probably a weird question to ask you there's got to be myths out there that's yeah. not true about human uh, trafficking Q- QAnon is the is the biggest enemy of uh, of human trafficking myths you know when i when i see people that say to me hey i saw a zip tie on a cart at uh target and i know that's a sign uh, that somebody's going to get abducted for human trafficking abductions are extremely rare that's typically not the case i'm not saying that you know everybody's seen the movie taken and everybody thinks that that's how human trafficking is that's a rarity you know when we look at uh, that abductions are are rare it's it's grooming where people are are groomed you know obviously poverty is one of the issues too when we look at it you know we're in 2021 poverty shouldn't even be a word anymore Right. I mean, you know, we, and, and, you know, so uh, and it only happens to people who, uh, you know, who put themselves in that situation. And, and that's not true either, because nobody's raising their hand and say it, you know, traffic me. Um, it's just an unforeseen combination of circumstances that put them in that situation where they're exploited. That's got to be one of the hardest jobs that a person could have is is uh when you use an organized crime in the fbi what, what all did you do in the fbi it's extremely complex uh yeah. you know when i well when i was in the bureau i worked uh, uh organized crime and uh and then i worked counterterrorism and and that's uh, part of organized crime and that's part of organized crime and yeah, that that became my level of expertise was was counterterrorism yeah. uh you know that's uh you know that's what my my phd is in is uh is counterterrorism uh radical uh, you know, so, you know, I stud- I've studied this, you know, my whole career. And you applied it. And you right. did it. You've been out in the field with this stuff. Right. I, I mean, it's, it's a problem, Rich, I hate to butt in, that I didn't even know existed. And why is that? Why is it a problem that we don't – it ain't on the national news. It's not – everybody's not talking about it. Why, why is that? Why is human trafficking – I don't know how to get to – you know what I'm trying to say. We all know about – everything else but why is human trafficking not being just hollered at with how many millions of people in the world are they involved in human trafficking as far as being a traffic you no know, being someone that's being used like that got to be millions correct yeah 40.3 40.3 why is it not hollered at the rooftop why yeah. is it kept under the, is it people shamed of it well no and i think that the fact is is that the complexity of working human trafficking cases require a great deal of resources that law enforcement simply doesn't have you know law enforcement wasn't created for what what they're doing today it's like you know it, police right now are, are almost like the catch-all like there's a dog barking next door, call the cops. Sure. There's a car parked outside, call the cops. That's not what they're there for. Okay, they've become the catch-all, and their resources are spread so thin. Uh, and human trafficking cases are, are long and drawn out, and extremely complex, and they require a great deal of resources. So what we've done is we've tried to reduce the demand by setting up these stings. And there's no research that says that that you know sting, that re- demand reduction uh, and and stings really work. And we're charging these people or the caption. Uh, you know that you see on tv is you know human trafficking sting when really it was 15 men who answered an ad online and got arrested for prostitution or are going to plead out to prostitution and you know it, we don't need to manufacture victims we've got enough real victims out there that we could that we should be going out and, and look for but law enforcement resources are so thin that's their strategy to 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 go after that uh you know that aspect and you know in in media kind of you know or hollywood really kind of sensationalizes you know what human trafficking is and what it is not and we need to make sure that we educate people on you know how prevalent this crime is it sounds to me like yeah. it's everywhere yeah. 40 something million people yeah. that's a lot of people yeah. and you know when you look at you know each state i mean tennessee you know is ranked 19th when we look at human trafficking 
trafficking cases in 19. the in, in, in 1930. That's the middle of it, right in, there. Yeah, right there in the, in the, in the middle Christ. of, you know, and, and obviously, you know, for, for population reasons, you know, that, you know, California is one, you know, look where it sits at, you know, right. And then you got Texas on the southwest border. And then, you know, you got Florida. And then, you know, if you look at like, you know, the top 25, most of them fall in the, in the eastern corridor, uh, you know, from Tennessee on over. And, you know, the, the problem is, is that, you know, the, the lack of awareness uh, leads to the, the lack of identification of, of victims. So you said the, the, the top states are on the east side? More states on the east, eastern coast are, are, in, are in the top 25 of, of human trafficking, yeah. with the exception of California and, and, and Texas. Does that, have, does that have to do with uh, maybe organized crime because you got more of a mob-affiliated folks over there? or Well, not the northeast. I meant like from like Tennessee all, all the way on over. But there's, yeah, certainly that, that uh, you know, organized crime has been involved in, in prostitution, strip clubs, you know, skimming and, and and stuff like that. When I worked, when I first went into bureau, I worked uh, organized crime, and that's what most of the organized crime uh, organizations were involved in. Were you know, I didn't know a family that didn't own a strip club because it was easy to skim money, uh, you know, th- th- through that aspect. But also to prostitute the the females out as well. Jesus Christ! If you had a, if you was going to stand up in front of a bunch of people <clears throat> like you're doing now, there's lots of people watching yeah. us. Uh, because I'm going to have to go to a break, and we're going to have to get on Afghanistan, but yep. I don't want to leave this yeah. out. This is yep. very important to me. Yep. Give me in a few minutes, just just run down what you want to tell everybody about human trafficking, <clears throat> how to, what it's about, you know, what we can do to prevent it, and how the general public can help to identify. What can you just tell me? You know, I, t- I, I think it's extremely important that that people recognize that this is a problem. You can't bury your head in the sand and ignore it. You can't arrest your way out of it, okay? And and, and it does exist. There was a study done by a, a, a professor a friend of mine who who did uh, the, and spoke at a conference in regards to this that, that – um, Eight out of ten men would pay for sex if it were legal. Seven out of ten would pay for sex if they knew they wouldn't get caught. So when you look at the demand for this, it's it's almost like going out and, and buying drugs. If you arrest somebody for buying drugs, they're not going to stop buying drugs, yeah. right? So if you arrest somebody for paying for prostitution, it's not like you're going to stop paying for prostitution. Men don't get online and look for human trafficking victims. You know, men get online and they're, they're, they're looking to hire a prostitute. They don't. The trafficker is just meeting that demand, and they're supplying that that victim. And the key for for us in order to eradicate this is to best educate ourselves on what that victim would look like in our industry setting. If I'm a clinician, what's it look like? What questions do I need to ask? What screening tools do I need to use to identify that that victim? Think about the last time you went to a hospital setting, how quick you were in and out, That's right? right? That's the lack of engagement. And then law enforcement, uh, you know, educate themselves on, on how to investigate these complex crimes. And then educators too. You know, my wife's a school teacher and she said that, you know, th- that they're required to watch a human trafficking training uh, th- through the state of Tennessee, and then all students are supposed to be trained on this as well. Well, my daughter's a senior in high school, and she hasn't received the training, so she's well past the 12-year mm-hmm. age of being exploited. So kids need to know the dangers. Parents need to explain the vulnerabilities to the kids and and what to recognize. Is there a website that you want to promote? Yes. Uh, you Can you know, type that in, producer? Yeah, absolutely. www.hopeforjustice.org. <laughs> He's going to put that on her. He's he's been over. I don't know what he's doing. He's looking at me now. He's doing something. Hope for Justice dot org dot org www hope for Justice dot org. Is there a lot of information on there that can help the public? There is. I've got granddaughters, mm-hmm. Richard. I'm going to, I, I'm going to call you Richard yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And, but you are I'm respectfully Richard. Yeah. <laughs> I've got granddaughters. That's that's starting out. They're aged from. Oh, Lord, five-year-old up to 16-year-old. And uh, they all got their cell phones in their hand. Yeah. They're all on the Internet, and their mamas do a good job, and daddies. And I got two girls and one boy. They do a good job at monitoring. I, they're really bad on them. You know, they're hard on them. But now, after hearing and talking with you, I don't think we're hard enough. We go out and start at home. Because mm-hmm. because the people that's wanting this are out there. You're not going the, the older guys. You, you can't you can't stop them from wanting it. What we're going to, have to do is is stop the supply for them. 
and how to stop the supply, I think what you're telling me is, is as parents and grandparents are going to have to start learning what to look for. We're going to have to somehow or another get our uh, institutions, hospitals, law enforcement, school teachers and all what to look for. And maybe we can't we can't uh, stop the demand, but maybe we can slow down the supply of it. You think that's a, a doable? Yeah, absolutely, and I think that's what's really important is we got to have those hard conversations with our kids. We do, we do. Yeah. But uh, is there anything about Henry County that we need to, that we need to know about going on? I mean, you can't tell me off. I know you told me coming on. He did tell me, Billy. He said there's some stuff I can't tell you because it's a secret, you know. Mm-hmm. But is there anything about Henry County that rings out in your head and well, might tell my listeners you got just got children? Yeah, I would just absolutely say that Henry County is not isolated or immune from the human trafficking problem. So it is going on. It here. is going on. Did you get my? Did you get it on there, producer? I want everybody to see that. Uh, you know, because it's very important that we we got to fix the problem ourselves. Because after talking with you, you're all your years in the FBI. You can't fix it, and the policeman can't fix it. So it's going to be up to us parents and grandparents to stop the supply because the demand is there. Yep. So um, if, if they go to that website and they can learn some stuff to look for, and would you stay around? Because I'm going to have to take a commercial break. They're poking at me over there, and I want you to tell me your expertise on Afghanistan and what in the hell is going on over there. Would you hang around and do that for me? Absolutely. All right, folks, we're going to take a break, and uh, – I hope you learned something about the human trafficking, because I sure did. I, I had no clue all of this was going on, uh, and uh, we're blessed, Billy, to have this man in here. Oh, yeah. I mean, most definitely. It's and, just amazing to me. Go to that website and learn what you can, and, and let's, and let's take, stop this mess, man. Let's don't let any county get involved in that. Let's, let's do something with our children. So uh, looks like we're ready for a break, and we'll be back in a minute. Stay there. This presentation of the Mike Weatherford Show is being brought to you by Paris Power Sports, a bad boy and skag mower dealer and service center that is the area's leading power sports company since 2016. Mow with an attitude and power on. Napa Auto and Truck Parts. With over 95 years of experience, you can trust the Napa know-how. Take Me Back Cafe, delicious home-cooked family-style meals in a nostalgic, warm, and inviting atmosphere. Take Me Back Cafe, great for the entire family. And the attorneys at Hawley and McAdams, who with over 90 years of combined experience, pride themselves in competent, thorough representation, utilizing their vast experience in a broad array of practice areas. Voted favorite law firm in the 14th Annual Reader's Choice Award, Hawley and McAdams are proud and honored to serve you. Back to the Mike Weatherford Show. We got Dr. Richard Showborough. He is a retired FBI uh, national counterterrorist, and he has been talking about, uh, Billy, he's been really talking about this human trafficking. I mean, it's it's a worldwide problem, Billy. Oh, yeah. I tell you. Yeah, it's, it's terrible, man. And it's in Henry County. I mean, we... He left a uh, some a lot of information out there for everybody to look at, and I want you to go there that website we put up a while ago, and I want you to check that out because we don't want that to happen to our babies. I mean, we just don't want that to happen. And, uh, uh, Richard, now we're gonna move on to the damn mess going on in Afghanistan. Now, you got you've been stationed over there as a counterterrorism what was your yeah when i worked with the with the fbi and the national counterterrorism center we did quite a bit of work over there in investigations gathering intelligence uh particularly you know post 9 11 you know when when you're looking at it uh is when when we really kind of got involved over there Mm -hmm. tell me a little bit of history quickly about the factions and 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 it's been going on since biblical times in Afghanistan. Tell me about what's Yeah, what's you know, it, it, Afghanistan has gone through about 40 years of crisis, you know, uh, in, in a millennia. I mean, terrorism is not new. It, you know, dates back thousands of years. And, you know, and Afghanistan certainly not shy to that. You know, and our involvement in the U.S. started back in, in the late 70s when the Russians invaded Afghanistan. And we started supplying them with uh with weapons and training on on how to combat uh you know the the invasion of 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 russia and then after that happened 
um, the U.S. just kind of said, well, okay, we're done. Russia's out. Uh, no reason for us to be there. We left that country in a vacuum uh, without even establishing a puppet government. And one of those individuals that we trained that was part of the Mujahideen was, was Osama bin Laden. That's, that's no, uh, you know, um, nothing new for people. Um, and, and Osama bin Laden had this hatred for the U.S. because of our involvement in the Middle East and, and not following through with, with creating some form of stability within within the region so we're talking you know a long time yeah. back right so he forms this group uh called al-qaeda right the base they start training uh in in afghanistan uh and and then wow fast forward uh to, to 2001 and we see the tragic events of, of 9-11 happen because the the u.s was naive to think that that we could be struck from uh, afar and and now and now let's fast forward 20 years and what we've done is basically repeat history we've left a country in a vacuum with uh you know no government in place we we've got three terrorist organizations that are occupying that country you've got um you know isis k you've got the taliban and you've got al-qaeda and the biggest concern is not having any actionable intelligence on the ground now that you know earlier you and i we were talking about you know the, the way that we left Afghanistan yeah. and you know when people cling to planes that are flying out of the country that's sheer desperation that's not like oh I think there's going to be a problem here you know they know that, what's coming yeah they know what's coming they lived under the Taliban rule previously they lived under Sharia law with the Taliban you know before the U.S. led uh, invasion you know in October uh, 7th 2001 following the attack of 9-11 so they know they know that the Taliban isn't progressive and they're not going to be a kinder gentler terrorist organization I can even say that you know and not just to mention that they lived in uh, in a time when Al Qaeda trained there when Al Qaeda recruited there and you know now we're going to throw in another terrorist organization the Islamic State and you know there's no doubt in anybody's mind who has any training or history in counterterrorism that you know that these these threats are not just going to stay in Afghanistan uh, amen it, it's going to give the terrorists a place to to harbor a place to train a place to recruit and a place to launch attacks from they've been fighting since the biblical times their great 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 granddaddies fought because it's broke up in different tribes. Is that the word to use? Yeah, tribes, regions. Yeah, regions. And and I got a good sneak suspicion that the ones fighting today, their great 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 grandchildren are going to still do the same. It's just bred in them. It's just the way they are. Is that would it, that be accurate? It, it, if you're a 40 year old um, Afghanistani, then you you know nothing except for U.S. occupation, and you know and and if you're older than that, then you knew that it was Taliban occupation, uh, and you know the fact is is that when we think about uh, what's happening over there, it's naive for us to think history isn't going to repeat itself yeah. and and we're not going to start seeing more uh threats of attacks in fact just just the this past week uh the the intelligence report that came out of homeland security was sent out to all law enforcement agencies across the u.s that that clearly stated that we need to be on a heightened level of awareness because we know now that there will be inevitable terrorist attacks and uh, you know uh within or planned terrorist attacks within the u.s and you know the biggest concern is is somebody being inspired by these groups and when you think about you know the taliban's claim victory and w us leaving afghanistan is basically said hey if you can wait it out you'll yeah. end up winning so what a better recruitment tool for that we know that uh that yesterday that um the chief deputy for osama bin laden came out of hiding and he's now in Afghanistan so you know we're gonna see a surge you know we estimate that there's roughly about 400 members of, of al-qaeda left right after the death of Osama bin Laden and and the and and then all of a sudden you know the the numbers kind of dwindled we, we did hit their hit them pretty hard but now we've given them the opportunity we've taken our thumb off the pulse and we've given them now the opportunity to resurge right. but not only resurge for for that terrorist organization organization 
let's look at the Islamic State, you know, and I and, you know, when we, when we talk about the Islamic State, you know, the past administration, Trump administration ran on the platform that we're going to demolish ISIS. We're going to go after ISIS to the core. You can't bomb an ideology. That's true. But it's kind of like mowing your yard. Right. It's called maintenance. Right. And, and, you know, uh, and, and if you don't mow your yard, it's going to grow out of control. Right? right. It's the same thing with terrorist organizations. If you don't um, monitor and maintain them, Amen. then they're just they're just going to get out, out of control. We pulled all of our intelligence, our eyes on intelligence out of Afghanistan. What Afghani would cooperate with us at this point, particularly the ones that we left no. there? Right. They, 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 be, they seen the people falling off in plane. Right. Did Trump do a good job Come, in Afghanistan, in your opinion? You know, um, given some of the policies as far as withdrawing from Afghanistan, I don't think it was a good idea to withdraw, uh, you know, our base in, in Afghanistan. You know, when we, you know, in all the other past wars that we've had, we've always left a base yeah. at, w- within that region. And I know, you know, people, the debate is people will say this has been a 20 year war. OK, um, you know, well. Has it really been a 20 year war or was there a war and then there was just an occupation of the U.S. having a base there? Think about the jobs that we provided the Afghani people that was there, the stability, the economics. We got a base. The hope we 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 left. We got bases in Germany. Right. And Japan. How long has that been? Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And so the fact is, is that us not having boots on the ground or, or eyes on the ground, we really remove our all of our intelligence gathering capabilities within within that region and you know so we don't even know what's going to happen with these terrorist groups that are uh, that are over there and who's going to be fighting for because because the taliban certainly can't control that country and, and what's i mean it's a terrorist organization it's not a political right. movement. it's not political, a government yeah it's not a political movement it's a terrorist movement what's the difference in al-qaeda taliban isaac and isaac k do you know yeah so you know uh, you know, they all sound like terrorists to me. Right. And, you know, I, I no longer refer to them as the Islam- ISIS because ISIS is really the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria. They're well beyond Iraq and Syria, you know, so I call them the Islamic State organization. And the Islamic State really is an, is an offshoot of, of Al Qaeda that was, you know, uh, created in, in, in Iraq. And it, because they didn't think Al Qaeda was really brutal enough, to be honest with you. So, and, and I, you know, when Al Qaeda basically says they, we want nothing to do with you, how bad do you got to be as, as an organization, right? So, you know, so um, Abu Bakr al Baghdadi, um, who, who's now dead because, uh, you know, uh, the, um, during the Trump administration, he, he had sent special forces in to, to capture him. He killed himself by suicide uh, before they before they reached him. Uh, but long still lives the Islamic State. They're still they're still around. OK, they still have a desire to create a caliphate or a holy land, uh, you know, that's occupied just just by them. And so th- that's that's kind of their agenda is to create that caliphate. Um, but it's also so their their idea to to bring it upon Westerners, uh, the U.S. or U.S. allies, right? Uh, when when we look at that, they're more sporadic. Um, I would consider them in the terrorist uh, realm. That yeah, um, professionals would be Al Qaeda. The amateurs would be ISIS, but at least the professionals are predictable. It's the amateurs that scare the crap out of you because you, you don't know what they're going to do. Unorthodox. Yeah, unorthodox. And, you know, and ISIS expire, you know, aspires uh, people uh, online through Internet recruiting. Uh, they look for those individuals who, who they can easily recruit and radicalize and then utilize them to carry out uh, attacks, particularly lone wolf attacks. You know, when when we talk about people who are inspired to create uh, uh, these attacks, you know, these terrorist attacks can be inspired or they can be directed. And the ones that are directed by terrorist organizations are, are much more easily disruptable than the ones that are inspired. Because when you've got that kid that lives at home in mom and dad's basement and he becomes radicalized, radicalized online because he wants to be a part of something bigger. He wants to, he he's looking to be part of, of something that makes them more notable uh, and, and puts them in a position that they're no longer a nobody. They're a somebody, right? right? Part of it. Yeah. The, and they're part of it. Those, those easily, uh, m- those minds can easily be uh, directed to carry out an attack, particularly when we're seeing 
the Islamic State and Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda just released their. Uh, they have a magazine. It's, it's, a I always, magazine. Yeah, I always refer to it as, as like the GQ for jihadist because <laughs> they have a magazine, online magazine called Inspire. And what Inspire basically does, they haven't put one out in years, and they just put one out at the end of July. Uh, you know, so they knew all this was happening. And in these in these magazines, Al Qaeda does it, and, and the Islamic State does it. And what they do is they profile. Um, terrorists in there you know and when you're a terrorist do you really consider yourself a terrorist or do you consider yourself a martyr you know how do you stop somebody that's willing to die for their belief you can't hey, what i've always given right yep yeah. you know so when when you're looking at that these magazines um they they tell you what, what type of attacks to carry out um so for example the truck bomb that took place in in new york city the month before that truck bomb that took place in new york city a couple of years ago they said go rent a truck and that's what this kid did he went to the, he went to home depot and rented a truck and then he says plow through crowds of of people so how do you profile somebody he ain't on the radar right he's not even on the radar yeah, there's you no know? way to and then that. yep and then these type of attacks are what the islamic state looks to do these sporadic attacks these attacks that are that are out there that would inspire somebody a lone wolf or a couple people to go out and, and do things so you're saying that's going to get worse now you're going to see that you know clearly get worse and then you know and, and some of the biggest concerns are that we're starting to see women take more of an operational role in, in, in not just in recruitment, but, uh, you know, the San Bernardino shooting that took place a few years ago. Um, you know, Farouk's wife radicalized him. His wife, you know, she yeah. came over from Saudi Arabia. They met online because where you meet all the great people. And he <laughs> and he and he and he, and he, he she radicalized him. And, you know, and then they uh, go out and, and carry out this 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 attack. I got point blank asking something, but I want you to do some questioning. I try to keep my show not political. I try to be yeah. neutral, stay in the middle. But I'm going to ask you, did Biden, President Biden, just make a mess out of this withdrawal? I think if you if anybody watched the press conference today, he was extremely defensive and defiant uh, when you looked at it. I mean, did he make it, a mess it, out of this withdrawal? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think I think there was a better way to whether you agree with with um, withdrawing from Afghanistan or not withdrawing from Afghanistan. The fact of the way it was handled was completely mismanaged. And it's it, well, who should whose head should roll for this? Should it be the pre, the buck stops at that big desk, right? Mm-hmm. Is it the people? Is it the military leaders that was left over there? Because he replaced all of them when, when Trump left, I'm, I'm sure. And probably in your organization, the FBI and CIA, y'all got mismanagement changed around. Whose ass should be chapped for this acting like he did? Well, I mean, you know, uh, you know, Joe Biden basically said the buck stops here. You know, he, he, that stupid? He, he, he was driving the helm. And, and there's no well, there's no way one president can be an expert you on watched everything him on TV. You're asking a question like, yeah, well, I'm asking a man that knows. Yeah. And, and I think and, and not and, and <laughs> you're not right, Billy. and not to be political about it. I know yeah, you're but, not. But but, but, but but to be, you know, neutral and, yeah. and just a U.S. citizen and, and a person that is well educated on, on counterterrorism. Yeah. He's just made this uh, more difficult for people who who work in the counterterrorism arena and put more people in danger uh, by doing what he's done. Let me read you something here. You tell me if I'm correct. Didn't President Trump make a deal in February of 2020 that if the Taliban or its members didn't attack the U.S. or its allies, we would remove all troops in 14 months? That was part of right. the deal. But the Afghan government wasn't in agreement with that. That was the government then. Because they would not release the prisoners. So if we had a deal made that was going to take 14 months from February to get those prisoners, to, get, to, get to, to take everybody out of there, why in the hell didn't we go and take the people out, take the bases, get all the military equipment out, why didn't we uh, uh, then move back and get and then blow up all the air bases and take all that equipment with us? Do you have any? Can you tell me? I mean, is that you told me you couldn't tell me top secret stuff? No, but I mean, I, I will tell you this, and I and I've got to refer to this. Uh, you what know, that I heck? that I have on my phone only because th- these numbers are just so staggering. Yeah. So there's 33 Black Hawk helicopters. Yeah, I got numbers there, right? Yeah. 169 armored personnel carriers, right. 23,000 armored Humvees, right. and almost 400,000 rifles. That's what we left there. That's yeah. not what the Afghan army left there. We just so we just weaponized Billy and. And Richard, 
a army, if you want to call it that, or a, or a terrorist group with some of the best equipment in the world, correct? We just beca- we just became suppliers to, to three terrorist organizations. And we're going to have to go back in over and straighten this mess out because they're going to use it on their own people. They've got sniper weapons. They've got millions of dollars worth night of just regular arms. Yeah, night vision, regular cargo planes, uh, bomb-proof Humvees, bomb-proof personnel carriers. Uh, I can just go on and on and on. Why in the hell did we just? Why did we leave that? Do you, Do you have anybody in the CIA that's told you what the hell that's all we, about? We did not have a well-developed exit strategy, and I think when you're looking at that, you know, and you think about the way this was mishandled, uh, you know, clearly the president was misadvised, uh, you know, because. How, how could you not prepare for a com- for a country to collapse? OK, and, and I think Biden put too much weight on the president of Afghanistan who took off and yeah, left, left and left millions with, of- me, with millions of dollars that the U.S. had. Right. Yeah. And then three hundred thousand Afghan uh, army just gone. Yeah. And then they you probably know, jumped on the, the terrorist side now. Well, I mean, it's kind of like this. It's kind of like when you go to prison, you got to pick a side. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if you're when you're stuck now in Afghanistan, uh, what are you going to say? Yes, I helped the Americans or no, no I'm going to join your organization yeah. because those individuals who, who were left there and we know that there's an upward of there, you know, this is what's even more baffling is we don't even know if it's 100 or 200 Americans left there. And or a know, thousand. Or, we don't know. And so, so we, didn't we give a list of the people to let through the lines? Now, how stupid can you be, Billy, to give a list to the Al Qaeda or whoever <coughs> Taliban? Yeah. This is the people that's helped us let them through so we can get them out of here. No, come yeah, on now. We, you know, and come and on, I, and man. I, and I, and I, yeah, and I know we got a hundred thousand. Uh, people out of the country, and now they're at various. Uh, well, who was they? Uh, well, we haven't even vetted them yet. That's right. So we don't know if if yes, indeed, you you um, are a good guy or a bad guy, right? And then the ones that we did leave there, they're not going to be welcomed with open arms by the by the Taliban, uh, by no means. They're going to be executed, and we just set that country back, you know, twenty something years in in history, because now it becomes a human rights issue. So now, you know, the Taliban doesn't believe in education for for women or chi- or children, and you know, when you start looking at that, and and their strict enforcement of of the Sharia law, and 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 really the punishment that they deem out to people. I, I showed them cutting hands. Hands off. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and ask him, Billy. I know you've been chopping over. Ask him what? Questions. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, we'll just, uh, <laughs> just stick me in that. Yeah. Um, okay, here's something I was kind of wondering about. I hear tell that uh, actually they stopped the air support to the Afghan army. Is is that true? No. Like, like no, a I while think, you ago? know, you know, when. I think what the United States' strategy was, the less um, that we do, the more that the Afghan army will have to pick up and do. And I think we really actually thought that if we handed over the responsibility to them, after all, after 20 something years, right, that they would actually defend against the Taliban. But the problem was, is we underestimated the strength of the Taliban. We underestimated the numbers of the Taliban. We underestimated their capabilities and what they could do. And, you know, so the fact is, is that, you know, we really um, did not think through the right way to, to withdraw from that country. But is there, we also have to look at it this way too, is there a graceful exit after 20 years? I mean, obviously, I could do it better than this one. I'm not in military. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> you know, obviously, we didn't really put together, uh, or I guess we took it too much for granted that the Afghan army would help suppress and protect the the people yeah. within there. But then the Afghan army didn't think that their president, their leader, was going to haul ass out of the country, <laughs> right? And and take and take off to 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 a safe haven and take millions of dollars with them. So the country literally just folded in 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 a matter but of weeks. Why didn't we stay there when we seen that imploding? Is that a word to use? Yeah. When we seen that happening. Why didn't we send some reinforced holes stop all this? We got to back up, regroup, and prop up this army so we don't want the Taliban in there. So really, 
what I'm trying to say, we're right back where we was in 2001, a few months before September 11, when we went over. Afghanistan's right back where it was at. In, in, in fact, they're probably strategically they're better. better. Yeah. yeah, they're better they're, off than yeah. what they are. They're, because they're, look at the equipment they got. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They 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 spent twenty years uh, fighting our special forces, so they're learning just as we learned. Why did yeah? Why did I, I, my question is this, and, and I'm sure that you're being a little reserved because of top secret stuff. But why didn't we take the people out? All the people that helped us early on. Let that start be a project back earlier because of the re- regime that's in, char- in charge of the white house i'm right starting now. to believe you're right billy i mean i've been arguing with you about that to give the man a chance because you know I, i'm i have have i not I've well yeah you. i know but but i think you're right billy i think i should have listened to you all along this we should have you heard got, that kevin yeah the people we could have got the man the people out mm-hmm. we could have got the the uh uh close the bases move the equipment out we could have slowly done like you when you do when you shut down a, a restaurant. Right. You don't just close doors one day. You sell out of everything slowly. You tell everybody we're out of chicken, we're out of beef, we got hamburger left. You know, and and, and then make an exit strategy. But I think that what we done was got thirteen of our warriors killed. Yeah, we got I, I believe so too. I mean, my goodness, you're going to rely on the Taliban? How are yeah, you going to trust them? That's, that's the Their same. religion. I mean, the Muslims' religion tells them it's okay to lie to me and you, you because can we're up, Richard. You're among yeah, yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah. Anything you want to tell us, we're digging. I'm, I'm yeah. pumping on you hard, and I know that we said top secret yeah, yeah. stuff, but we could have done better. And I want to know whose ass should be ground for this. We got 13 of our warriors mm-hmm. that's dead. Yeah, thirteen people. That's, and have you seen some of them that's mad at, at the president for the way he handled it? He didn't even talk to him. I don't know why you call him president. That well, just I, he's our, I respect the office of president. Yeah. He was newly yeah. elected, huh? Well, he's our president, Billy. I'll give you that. I mean, <laughs> he's your <laughs> president. Mother. All right, we we'll, we we'll, we'll have, we'll have to agree to disagree on that. One. But he is our president. He, he's your yeah. president. Yep. He's he's Billy's too. Yep. Billy don't like him. And Billy, I'm not elected. saying. Okay, well, I, <laughs> well, they can say that all the time they wanted to about That's Trump, right. but I can't say that about old Biden. You can say what you want to say, brother. I've, I've got you back on that. Okay. I always have. But uh, we could have not screwed up worse. So I want to know who's who the hell's responsible. Biden didn't do this. He don't have the mental capability to do what just went on. Very carry on a sentence. That's right. There's somebody in charge of that withdrawal. Is it? Is it? Could it be the generals? Well, you, you know. Uh, do you know who in the hell? Lord you, know, you know. So, and so I'm not beating on you. No, Richard, no, no, no. Me. Yeah, yeah. I know. So, so when you look at the historical aspect of this, Biden has never really relied on the recommendation by the Joint Chiefs of Staff. But today, during his press conference, he says, I relied on the recommendation of my Joint Chiefs of Staff. So he was oh, to, 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 Yeah. And so he, he literally blamed everybody. And I at the, blaming Trump. And at the same time, he said, the buck stops here. So at some point, you know, I think as the leader of the free world, you have to basically hold yourself accountable and, and say, I underestimated what was going to happen. You're going to have to. And you're going to have somebody. Because we hadn't had a death over in how long? 18 uh, months. 18 months. Yeah, right. And then all of a sudden we got 13, 13. of our warriors. And we had intelligence right. that it was going to happen. They told it on TV. They had intelligence that, we it was, don't, that an attack was imminent. That when, when you say that a terrorist attack is imminent, that means it's going to happen. That's right. right. Hence the word imminent. We're not privy to the information you have as FBI. And we're not. And, and I don't know if you and what you do is more same information that the president gets. Uh, probably based on the same information. He knew more than we did, yeah. and the people he's got in charge should have done something. You know, these this, these people coming through, let me read something to you here. The Taliban are, are uh, American citizens with proper passports, and all the documentation was told they could get through Afghanistan and get to the airport, correct? Correct. But how come they can't get through, but a damn suicide bomber can? Does right. that tell you Afghanistan is doing what they said they was going to do? Well, if the Taliban was supposedly, I'm not yeah, no, 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 if, if, if the Taliban was was in theory. charge was in charge of the security, then they did a pretty poor job if they allowed an ISIS K suicide bomber sent the bastard up there. Su- su- 
th- through the checkpoints, yeah. right? And not everybody is, is, you know, got through that wanted to get through. No. And, you know, and we still have, you know, 100 to 200 Americans, and we still have how many thousands of Afghan refugees or, or uh, visa holders who, who helped us. Yeah, that, that, left the dogs. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, yeah. <laughs> that, are, that are there. So cl- clearly, you know, when you think about how, how on strategic, if you want to use that, uh, this was, uh, you know, it, 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 up on, I yeah, guess. it, it really puts us in a, in a bad light, uh, particularly across the globe, uh, particularly with allies, particularly with everybody Who's else. Who's going to trust us? Yep. Yeah, yeah a- absolutely. And it's kind of like ripping off a bandaid. Yeah. So at some time <laughs> you made a, you made an, an agreement to come to exit the country and leave the country, but did you make it? the agreement to leave like this and, and not have not have things in place uh, in order to protect those that that we promised we would protect <coughs> there's people standing there holding signs yeah big cardboard signs blue signs and the Taliban won't let them through yeah they won't they're holding them back but a guy slips in and blows up and kills 13 of our warriors you know well, it's not only that but did you see the destruction after that bomb went yeah. off all the I mean all the Afghans too. I mean, it was absolutely horrible. It's it's yeah. it's terrible that we allow a a. That, why ain't there investig- is there investigation going to happen? Oh, you know there'll be an investigation. Well, th- this is what I want to know well. is why why is not government officials? I don't care who they are. Why are they not held accountable for all this stuff that they do? That's stupid. I got held accountable for. Well, almost everything. Everything I got caught doing. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I don't understand it. You got Benghazi. Yeah. I, I, explain that to me. Yeah, absolutely. I know them. but Well, I know of them and talk to them a little bit because of the industry I was in. They'd get them to come here and, and you know, and I talked to them a little bit. But I, I don't understand you know, that. The, you know, in, in, in this line of work, we call it intelligence failures. And, you know, knowing knowing that we had the intel, but were unable to do anything about it. You know, 9-11 was an intelligence failure. You know, you had two sides of that, two, two silos not cooperating and sharing information. That's why the National Counterterrorism Center was actually created post 9-11 was because of the fact that the FBI and the CIA was not sharing information with one another because, you know, by constitution, you know, the CIA was prohibited from sharing this information because they get their information, you know, typically not from a, you know, a legal standpoint, you know, whereas the FBI is held, you know, to the ground where they have to go out and, and, you know, because people have a Fourth Amendment right, you know, legal search and seizure. And all that. So to kind of circle back what you just said, Mike, is, yeah, they're going to there's going to be an investigation in, into that. And I think, you know, even, you know, even by maybe the impeachment. Yeah. Who, who knows? But you know that that uh, that, you know, that Congress will come together to kind of look into this. But, you know, because well, they, they ain't going to do anything unless it's a Republican. Richard, I hate well, to butt in on yeah, you. Yeah. And you're not here to debate you. Yeah, I'm no, not, yeah. I, I appreciate everything you're saying. Yeah. But they're not with 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 the. The way this country is right now, when you try to shut down, because this happened to me on my show, when you shut down another side of the story, you know, do you think that the Democrats, Republicans can get together and investigate this? I, I think it's just going to be wiped on the cover. They're, they're, we've become so polarized right. in, in our in our politics that some people are so far this way and so far that way that you can't even see the middle anymore. That's right. And, you know, the fact is, is that, you know, you and I had talked earlier where, you know, we used to be where we could we could debate. Issues right. and discuss issues without going for people's throat yeah. and, and this cancel and culture. Yeah. And yeah, and I mean the fact is, is that if you, if you don't bring these issues to light, okay, then then we're not educating people properly, that's right? right? That's and, right. And, and 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 that's what we have to do. Uh, why didn't the president of of, of uh, Afghanistan, the one that we set up, yeah, why do you think he he had the all the choppers? And all that equipment that we left over there, that could have been his. Why didn't he stay and fight with that, in your opinion? Why, why in the hell did, why did the president of Afghanistan run off and leave it to the hoodlums? I think he saw the writing on the wall, and he knew the Taliban was going to – they were they were too strong. They moved too quick uh, and, and, and came in. And, you know, and, and the fact is, is that, you know, he probably saved his life. Uh, did he do did he do the right thing? No, not as president of a country, right? Right. And, and you know, you got to stand – you should be – if you take that job, you should be willing to 
die for that job. Well, it's a county right? job. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you like know, a sheriff yeah. or are your FBI? Yeah, yeah. 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 Lack, lack lack of leadership clearly in, in that aspect it, to to leave his country and leave his country to, we to the wolves to the wolves. The wrong man we picked to be the president. Yeah, yeah we kind of set up a, the the wrong. Why guy. did China and Russia jump in? You know what I'm thinking? Cause of lithium. You know, that's the biggest. You're probably not into all that. That's the biggest. You know that? Oh, yeah. That's the well, biggest. It's not just that. It's all the other resources. No, yeah. There's a lot yeah. of the reason yeah. why the China and, and yeah. Russia have jumped in. Yeah, actually, you know, Russia released a, a, a had a press conference today, uh, and their minister of defense said that the, that, that, the, that the Russian government is not laughing at the chaotic exit of, of the United States because it really puts more people at risk uh, and their allies at risk now that that area has become so destabilized. Now, whether it was at a political statement, just to say it, just yeah, to say it, yeah. you know, or what? Who who, who knows? China's but, laughing at us. But yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, they're happy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They say now we yeah. got we ain't the they big, made your president. Yeah, they said we ain't the big guys. Y'all ain't the big guys on the block now. Yeah, the instability that's in that region now between Iran, okay, and now Afghanistan. It, it, it's it's very concerning, and and in Iraq too. I mean, we still have troops in Iraq, and we still have troops in in Syria. So, are we going to see um, this administration now pull those troops out as well? Because you have to leave some sort of footprint there to yeah, get man. to give us History to give us a, the future. Yeah, oh. and, and, it, and it's looking like that's his next move. Yeah, but uh, we got you know the northern part of Iraq, which you're familiar with. I'm not. I just happened to. I knew you was coming, and, and you remember I told you. I said, don't make me look real stupid yeah remember i told you <laughs> you know that's, that's not, not a Billy, shut up <laughs> but uh, uh uh their northern part of afghanistan is more friendlier to to i guess us maybe mm-hmm. is that alliance up there a little more friendlier why don't well, it's the northern alliance yeah yeah why don't we why is glenn beck and all them other private people Flying in up there and, and, and trying to get through, but the Chinese are trying to block us. The regime going, that's in the White House is yeah. not going to help. Yeah. yeah, he said on TV, I heard this. I don't know if you're familiar with this part. You probably don't get this information mm-hmm. like we do. But he's trying to get these people that's needing to get out, American citizens and their allies, up to northern part and get them on planes and get them. He's got some people out. Yeah. Why is why is the military not doing this? And I think you're seeing a lot of a lot of veteran groups too That's are right. also right. aligning themselves to get out because you know those those groups and those organizations realize the the suffrage they realize the sacrifices that those individuals that we left over there um, you know did for us did for America yeah. because we promised them something we promised them stability we promised them structure organization for twenty years we if, told them if they call, if if they help us out. And, and 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 we're doing the exact same thing we did when we left Afghanistan in the late seventies after uh, we pushed out Russia. Didn't we do basically the same thing in Korea? Vietnam, that's where they learned it from. We yeah. pulled out and left the Chinese on that border and started thirty eighth parallel and you still got northern Korea. Right. Yeah. But uh I didn't uh this ain't like being interviewed by uh uh Tucker Carlson, or mm. this is a little different, ain't it? No, it's all right. <laughs> I didn't mean to be hard on you, but I'm no, I'm, no. I'm, I'm a patriot, man. Yeah, I understand. See I understand. Right here, that's my yeah. father. Yep. He fought in World War II, right there. And uh, them 13 people that got killed was senseless. It should have never happened. Yeah. We should have had better security. We should have had a damn military over there. We should have shut down and pulled all that stuff out. Because we're going to go back. We're going to have to go back and deal with this mess again. You know, we should have, if we couldn't take that equipment, don't tell me, then people say, well, my kid costs more to ship it back. We'll blow it up. Yeah. Do something with it. We left 300. I got my notes here. And, and I don't know how accurate these numbers are, but we left uh, uh, Black Hawk helicopter, armored personnel carriers, mine proof vehicle, plane, hundreds of thousands of small arm, plus God knows what else that we've left over there. And I hope the Lord we didn't leave the mother of all bombs with him laying over somewhere. Yeah, you know, Moab. Yeah, <laughs> you know. And I think Billy said it earlier. I think that um, we put these terrorist organization, organizations that exist there in a better position. They were to well, succeed now. Yeah, because yeah. we we basically been a government contractor to arm them. Yeah, uh, we done it, and they got it for free. And all they had to do was just was just uh, say, yeah, we'll let you through. And there's people out there. That's American citizens and allies of ours holding up signs, and they can't get through, but a bomber can. Uh, 
Man, we've had a good chat, Billy. Any more questions you want to talk to, man? Because I, I think they, I hope I haven't insulted you a bit. Not at all. <laughs> well, I don't yeah, know I where got, he feels politically. I got, I got a lot of questions, but go I'm ask them. Well, we ain't got time. We for got plenty of time. We no, got we time. Don't. You ask them. <clears throat> it's fixing them. He, hey, my name's right on the front. of This thing. See it? Can you see it? Ask the questions. Say that. Go for it. Well, one of the things you was talking about, like uh, we had intel and we ignored it back when. Uh, they bombed the uh, World Trade Center in the garage. They actually caught that. Ninety-one. Uh, yeah, right. They caught him over in the Philippines, and he already gave them intel, telling them that, about them wanting to fly planes. Yep. Into we, the, into the towers, and nothing was done. Really, no. I don't know. No, I mean when you when you think about you know counterterrorism and how terrorism has evolved over the years, I don't think anybody in their right mind thought somebody was going to fly a plane into the World Trade Center. You know, that's just not something that you think's within the box. You know, but but terrorists nowadays kamikazes. Are, yeah, I mean, hello. Well, yeah, but that was during a war. Right. We don't think somebody's going to come from Afghanistan and become radicalized yeah. and and you know train to come over here and do this. In fact, Osama bin Laden. And, you know, notes that were recovered from his house. He didn't even believe it was going to happen. I mean, the mastermind of this was KSM, Khalid mm-hmm. Sheikh Mohammed. So, you know, when we start looking at that, that makes us also, you know, wonder too, you know, um, the intelligence that we got from him uh, and we've got from the other people that are still left down at Gitmo, and, and that's a topic we didn't even talk about, was Guantanamo Bay, what's going to happen there? Yeah, uh, you, exactly. know, you know, the Obama administration wanted to shut it down, and now this, this administration wants to shut it down. But where are you going to put those people? Turn them back over. Yeah. Go. Well, we, we, this well, is what we do they, know. They let, they let go over there. This, there this, is, a, this is what we do know, is that a majority of the people we release from Gitmo have reengaged in, in terrorism activity. You're in Guantanamo Bay. You're being waterboarded on a regular basis. When you leave there, do you think you love America? Do you, oh, yeah. do you think America is your friends? You know, when we talk about terrorist rehabilitation. You know, can a terrorist be rehabilitated? You know, does does de-radicalization even, even work? And how to de-radicalize somebody? We don't know. Okay, so how do you change? How do you change somebody's mindset who's willing to die for their belief? How do you well, find we, that? We just we just help them. I mean, they we need to just open the door up and let them go to their forty virgins. I mean, let's <laughs> go on and do this. Yeah, but uh, I'll arrange the meeting. Yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. We didn't we release a bunch of prisoners over in Afghanistan. Yeah, and then people hundreds. You, yeah, you know hundreds of ISIS uh, Islamic State fighters. And they're right back on the front line. Yeah, and it's going to happen in Guantanamo. Same exact thing is going to happen. Yeah. So uh, what do you give it? Uh, uh, sir, about 10 years we'll be fighting this war again if it takes that long. Uh, well, it won't really take that long. You know, I, I, I don't see this administration surviving um, the border crisis, the Afghan crisis. Oh, oh yeah, we forgot we have a COVID crisis and then natural disasters. I, I don't know how much weight uh, more you could put on a, an administration that they could survive. And I think the American people, uh, you know, Democrat or Republican, uh, w- w- would agree that, that this is, you know, they've lost faith in, in, this, in this leadership. I give them the benefit of the doubt because I am an American yep. citizen. I, I didn't like Biden. I don't think he's running my country. I think there's people behind the scenes running my country, but this is horseshit. You what can't turn an aircraft that. carrier around on a dime. No, it takes you, a little time that's right. to do that. So right. to turn this around for this administration is going to take certainly some some time to do it. And I think that you know you it's going to it's going to take a, another uh, you know uh, major attack yeah. uh, on the U.S. or our allies before we realize that probably wasn't the best of ideas to 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 remove well, our people boots. knows it. I think people like you that's in the that's and to know you know this is wrong yeah. i know you can't say a lot and i appreciate that and i hope you don't think that we was hollering at you i wasn't okay. i was getting passionate about it man because that's my country sure. i love my country sure. and i don't want to see my my soldiers and my my warriors getting attacked there's no reason for that to happen it could have been handled different if you and i and billy was in charge of that it wouldn't happen that way yeah. and i don't see how in the hell anybody can let how I that I know less information than you do, and, and you probably know less than, than uh, the president knows. I'm sure in your job you don't get all the stuff he gets. You don't get in the briefings he gets. But me and Billy could have done a better damn job than this. I mean, you know, yeah, there are people out there just listening to me right now. Goes, oh, my, yeah, but I'm telling you, we if we'd have lost our soldier, they'd been lost fighting. They would have been standing there. 
just getting blown up like that. It, this is uncalled for. This needs to stop. We need to find out who gave the president this information that turned out wrong. We need to get the rest of the people out of there. We need to stop all this horse crap and the political divide we got. Get them rest them people out of that and and go on with our life and just sit back and be prepared for what's fixing. We're going to have to pay for the music because we dance to the band. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know, Bill. I mean, uh, we're in I, trouble. We are in trouble. Man, I've kept you an hour and a half. Yeah. Am I in trouble? Yep. Uh oh. Yep, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got it right here, guys. I mean, uh, We've got a uh, FBI guy that maybe I've been a little hard on him, Billy. I don't know. I think we asked no, him. No, I don't question. think so. I think he understands your passion. Yeah, about I think you do understand my passion. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Yeah. And then no, no harm, no foul. I, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't take it as. Good. I want you to, but, yeah, I, I, yeah. but, but no, when you got a, a family full of a military like my family is and Billy's family is, and you see this mess that's going on. Uh, you and I have been talking about picking sides, and, and, and I picked the damn side, and I picked the side of my country. Sure. And I picked a side of my warriors, and I'm going to stand up for them. And uh, they was done wrong. We pulled out and left a mess, man. I mean, we have, we've left a mess. I don't know how to end this show, Billy. I mean, I want to keep going, but we're going to have to wind it down. Can you come back sometime? Sure, absolutely. And, and uh, maybe next time we'll. it won't be such fresh. And the 31st of August was a day that, you know, was a was a deadline, you know, the deadline. We had to get out. We had to do all this and that. And uh, anything else you want to add about Afghanistan that you might want to tell us to be looking out for? Anything on your mind that I didn't get to ask you a question about? No, I think that, you know, when, you know, today, uh, and I think what is what was what was daunting is when Biden was given his, his speech today, he said we underestimated uh, what would happen. And in when you when you work in counterterrorism uh, under you know, you never underestimate. You always overestimate what could happen That's because right. because, you know, uh, you have to be prepared for worst case scenario. Exactly. Prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Yep. If you ever get there with the firstest, with the mostest, which is not didn't really happen, but yeah. we should have been prepared better. All right, folks, I, I think it's time to let uh, Richard. Richard, I appreciate it, man. I really do. Your expertise was really, really something, man. I mean, I can see the passion in your eyes, and I can tell you, you probably want to tell me something off the – we're off the record, <laughs> but I really appreciate you coming. Oh, I hope I you felt Thank welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you felt you. welcome, man. Yep, I hope sure you did. did. I appreciate and, it. And, and uh, we're going to try to get back on this uh, human trafficking and try to get people to come to your uh, website, or whatever your group you're yep. Uh, yep. you're a part of. I'm going to tell it one more time if I can find my notes. Hope for justice. Yep. Hope for justice. Uh, can you put that up one more time, Mr. Producer, so we can get the people to go there because that's a problem that's here in Paris that we know it's here. We sure it's here or two I'm sure yep. hope for justice and, and, and that's mamas and, and daddies and granddaddies and grandmamas the headquarters is in actually the U.S. base is here in Nashville yep absolutely Nashville so let's get on this uh, it's hope for justice and uh, let's uh, get on there and let's try to stop the supply because the demand is there we can't stop the demand but we can stop the supply side of this and uh Richard, I appreciate you coming in. An hour and a half we've been talking here right yep, now. Yep, appreciate we covered a lot of ground, man. Sure but, uh, uh, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. We had a Dr. Richard Schofield. Uh-oh. Showboro. <laughs> I'll get it right. He is an FBI, and he is counterterrorism, and this guy really knows his stuff. If you've listened to what he's been saying, I'm sure he won't open up more, Billy, but uh, – you know, we kind of had to keep it under control a little bit here, but I did get a little bit off the record. But uh, everybody, Not I think pre yeah. <laughs> appreciate everybody tuning in. I want you to uh, like us on Facebook, follow us. And uh, for right now, go to YouTube and subscribe to us because we got some announcements to make. The producer is working on some projects, and uh, as you know, we've been censured a little bit ourselves, and I uh, hope this show don't get censured. I don't see why it would. I think everything's good to go, but uh, like I said, I want to appreciate all of y'all. I want to thank all of our our supporters and all of our listeners out there, because what we're trying to do, Billy, is we're trying to uh, find, some answers. find some answers, and this happened to be, a, we told you, it's going to be local, state, and uh, federal, and this is a federal problem that we all, we all got to deal with, and... Uh, we had a man on here tonight that answered some questions that told us what's going on. And uh, come back and see us. Keep watching us and tuning in.
This portion of the Mike Weatherford Show was brought to you in part by 54 Fuel Mart, a great place to eat with friendly staff and some of the best gas prices in town. Stop in for a bite to eat and get treated like family. That's 54 Fuel Mart, 1213A, Westwood Street in Paris. 